Here is a 10 question true or false math test. The questions are tricky, so be careful. If you answer false, you need to be able to correct the statement. No student has ever gotten perfect on this test. Good luck. Let me know in the comments what mark you get out of 10. Question one, true or false? A plus B plus C all being squared is equal to the sum of the squares of A and B and C. Before I give you the answer to this, let's take a closer look at the left side of this equation. I know that I could rewrite A plus B plus C all being squared as two factors of A plus B plus C being multiplied together. And then I could expand this by multiplying all three terms in the first factor by all three terms that are in the second factor. So I'll distribute the A to the A, B, and C of the second factor, distribute the B to the A, B, and C, and distribute the C to the A, B, and C. I can collect all the like terms in that expression, and it would simplify to A squared plus B squared plus C squared plus three other terms. So in this equation, the left side and the right side are not equal to each other. That means the answer to this question is false. Question number two, true or false? Sine of x plus y is equal to sine x plus sine y. Well, hopefully you know you can't distribute sine into its own argument, so this is definitely not true. Sine of x plus y is a compound angle identity, and I know it's equal to sine x times cos y plus cos x times sine y. And if you want a geometric proof of why that's true, I've got a video on that. Feel free to watch it. So this statement, false. Question three, true or false? The square root of 25 is equal to plus or minus five. Well, let's think about this before I give you the answer. Both five squared and negative five squared equal 25, which means five and negative five are both square roots of 25. But this square root symbol that we have in the question, that notation just means we want the principal root of 25, which means just the positive square root of it. So the correction to this question, since it's just the principal root symbol, the square root of 25, the answer to it is just five. So this question is false. If you wanted to generate both square roots of a number, you have to put a plus or minus in front of the principal square root symbol, and then that would equal plus or minus five. So either of these show a correct statement. Question four, true or false? A line perpendicular to y equals 5 has a slope of negative 1 over 5. Well, what does the line y equals 5 look like? The line y equals 5 is a horizontal line where every y coordinate on that line is 5. So it would look like this. What would a line perpendicular to that look like? Well, it would be a perfectly vertical line. I'll draw an example of one. What's the slope of any vertical line? It's undefined. So if I were to correct this question, it doesn't have a slope of negative 1 over 5. It has a slope that is undefined. So this question, again, was false. Question 5. True or false? A function can never touch an asymptote. To answer this, let me just draw a quick sketch of a function that has both a vertical and horizontal asymptote. Now, how does a function behave as it approaches a vertical asymptote? I know it's going to go down to negative infinity or go up to positive infinity. But what do I know about horizontal asymptotes? Well, the definition of a horizontal asymptote, we would say there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals c if the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of f at x is equal to c. So this horizontal line, we'll call it y equals c. All I know is that as x approaches plus or minus infinity, it's going towards c. So at the extremes, it's going to be approaching c. But at any one point, it could cross the horizontal asymptote. It could look like this. All we care about is that at the extremes, it's approaching the horizontal asymptote. But notice this function crossed it twice. So the answer to this question is false. Let me make some room so I can write in a correction. There's two ways we could write this. We could say a function can never touch a vertical asymptote. Or we could say a function can touch a horizontal asymptote. Question six, true or false? The equation x squared plus six x plus 25 equals zero has no solutions. Well, you could try and use the quadratic formula to find solutions to this quadratic equation. If you did that, I'll label my a, b, and c parameters and sub those into quadratic formula. I would have x equals negative six plus or minus the square root 
of b squared minus 4 times a times c, that would be negative 64. And that's all over 2 times the a value of 1. So at this point, when underneath the square root, you have a negative answer, you know there's going to be no real solutions to that. You can't square a real number and have a negative result. Notice I said the word real two times there. In the true or false question, it just says there are no solutions. It doesn't say no real solutions. So that's the trick to this question. It does have solutions. They're just complex solutions. Let me show you what they look like. I could rewrite this as negative 6 plus or minus. I could split the square root of negative 64 into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 64. And the square root of negative 1, we could just write that as i. So i times the square root of 64. And the square root of 64 is, of course, 8. So I have i times 8, which by convention, we would normally write that as 8 times i. And this is all over 2. So I need to divide both of these terms in the numerator by 2, which would give me negative 3 plus or minus 4i. So these are the complex solutions to the quadratic equation. There are no real solutions, but there are complex solutions. So this question is false. Question 7, true or false? x squared plus 4 is not factorable. Well, I have a perfect square term here, a perfect square term here, but it's a sum of squares. You probably know a difference of squares formula. I'll write it at the top here to remind you. And you might be thinking, can I apply a difference of squares formula to a sum of squares? And the answer is, yes, you can, if you use complex numbers again. Let me start by rewriting x squared plus 4 to show you how we can make it into a difference of squares. So I would rewrite it, first of all, as an x squared minus a negative 4. That's the same as x squared plus 4. And the negative 4, I could rewrite that as the square root of negative 4 squared. The squared and the square root cancel out, so it's still equivalent. And now this square root of negative 4, let me show you down here how we could rewrite that. The square root of negative 4 could be broken into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4, which is i times 2, or 2i. So I can replace the square root of negative 4 with 2i. So now I have an x squared minus a 2i squared. So it's a difference of squares now. So using the difference of squares formula, it would factor to x minus 2i times x plus 2i. And there we go, I was able to factor it. So this question must be false. Question eight, true or false? I can actually prove to you pretty quickly what the answer to this is. On the left side of the equation, I see two operations happening to the x. It's being squared and it's being square rooted. Those are inverse operations of each other. So it seems like they would cancel out and we would be left with x. Let's test that out. Let's sub in three for x and see if left side equals right side. The left side of the equation would be the square root of three squared, which is the square root of nine, which is three. And on the right side of the equation, I would have three. So for our test value of three, this equation is true. Let me test out a negative test value though. Let's test x equals negative three. On the left side of the equation, I would have the square root of negative three squared, which is still the square root of nine, which is three. But on the right side of the equation, well, what did I sub in for x? I subbed in negative three. So the left and right side of this equation are not equal to each other, which means this statement is not true for all values of x. So we would have to say that this is false. What's the correction to make this true? Well, what happened was when we subbed in either three or negative three for x, because we're squaring it before doing the square root, it's going to make what we're square rooting a positive value, which means the output is always going to be the absolute value of the x that we subbed in. So putting an absolute value on the right side of the equation now makes it true. Question nine, true or false? Applying the power rule of logarithms, to log of 3x squared gives 2 times log of 3x. Well, the power rule of logarithms tells me that the log of x to the n is equal to n times log x. You have to be careful in order to use the power rule 
the exponent that you're moving to the front of the logarithm has to be the exponent on the entire argument. And this two is an exponent on x only. It is not being applied to the three that's part of the argument. So for that reason, you could not apply the power rule of logarithms that simply brings that down and writes it in front. That wouldn't be true. If you wanted to use the power rule of logarithms for this expression, you would first have to split this into two logarithms. Using the product rule of logarithms, I could split it into log three plus log of x squared. And now I can take that exponent of two and move it to the front since that exponent is on the entire argument. So this would be equal log three plus two log x. And that's how you could apply the power of logarithms to that statement, which is not how it was done in the question. So this question is false. So if you've answered false on every question up till now, you've got nine out of nine. Good luck getting perfect though. Let's check out question 10. Question 10 says true or false. The answers to all 10 questions of this test are false. I'll let you pick your own answer to this question and then figure out on your own if you think you got the question right or wrong and then give yourself a mark out of 10. Let me know in the comments what mark you got. Hope you had fun. If you have ideas for future videos, let me know in the comments as well. Jensen.